Meantime, it's the beginning of Financial Literacy Month, and CNBC, in partnership with Acorns, the saving and investing app, has surveyed how Americans handle their money. One of the staggering findings is that 75% of people do manage their own funds. Sharon Epperson is here at Look at Whether or Not That's a Good Idea, Sharon. Well, there are a lot of people who say, I want to do it myself, and it doesn't matter wh how old they are. Really, what was interesting was 75% of people are managing their own money. Only 17% are using a financial advisor. And it didn't matter whether you were a millennial or a boomer or a senior, the majority of people are managing their own money. Now, whether or not they're doing that because they don't think they can afford a financial advisor or because they really have the tools that they need to do it themselves, that's the big question. I have a theory about this, and I, I, I think it's the indexing effect, meaning once people, if there's one thing everyone kind of knows about the market, so to speak, it's, oh, I just put my money in index funds. That's what Warren Buffett says, and I never exactly. touch it again. That might work okay if you're 30, but not only does it not work as well later on, but there's so much more to financial literacy than just what so do you do with that more, portion. So much more. And the thing that people forget is, yes, you can have a terrific robo-advisor, go into index funds, and set it on autopilot. But then one, what if something happens in your life that you didn't expect? Who is that person that's going to give you the emotional gut check so that you don't pull all that money out, invest in something that's too aggressive, invest mm -hmm. in something that's too conservative? There are not those types of questions often on these tools to really prompt you to make sure that you don't do something yeah. that your gut tells you you want to do, but your financial advisor, a human advisor, right. may say, look at the big picture. Even just, and yeah, I mean, we, you know, my dad, this is like, but, but even just knowing the insurance levels that are appropriate for you, the types of products, I mean, there's exactly. a whole lot that, that goes into that. But I wanted to actually ask about a separate thing that came up in this, which was asking people what they would do if they came upon an, an extra $5,000 as kind of a read into the consumer right now. And what did that say? Well, that said that a lot of people said that they would actually pay down debt. A third of people said that they would use that money to pay down debt. And a significant portion, I wish it was much greater, said they would put it toward short-term savings or long-term savings. The fact that anyone out there is saying they're going to put $5,000 to something that's not a vacation mm. is good news to me, that they're looking in the right direction in terms of planning for their financial life. And this unexpected amount of money, if a large percentage of it goes into savings or goes to pay down mm -hmm. debt, if that's what your biggest financial goal is, then that's great news. Right, except it, it, the money kind of goes away. And you're right, it's, exactly. it's the right thing to do, but from a 30,000-foot point of view, you go, well, that's why it's hard to stimulate the economy. Everyone's paying down debt. Sharon Banks, a lot pleasure. of good nuggets.